I have all day to spend up the allotment and there is a lot to do. I need to harvest my munchkin pumpkins. I'm also going to harvest my first red cabbage of the year. And I'm also going to harvest my first carrots. Now my tomatoes unfortunately came down with blight, so I have to pull them all up and burn them. And I'm also going to build a bee hotel for the leaf cutter bees. And I went foraging for some common hogweed, so I'll show you all how to do that as well. So I've got my tea. Now won't you come on in and then we can get started. have decided to completely take over the hazel archway as you can see because they've got rather big leaves they're taking up most of the space it's actually quite hard to walk through the archway now um, but I'm not complaining because there's absolutely loads of munchkin pumpkins on the plants and it looks really good as well and of course there's still loads of bolotti beans as well so it's great the sweet peas however were overshadowed a little bit there weren't many sweet peas this year uh, so I've learned not to put three things on the archway just because it overcrowded a bit. But on to the pumpkins. Now I'm going to pick some of these today. They are called Munchkin Pumpkins and they're from the Sarah Raven catalogue and I cannot recommend them enough. They have been my favourite thing to grow this year so far. I've picked four already about a month ago and they were just delicious. We cut the tops off, we took the insides out we stuffed it with cream, kale and chorizo and we roasted it in the oven for 45 minutes and it was really, really delicious. I've got the recipe over on my blog so if you want to check that out I do recommend that as well because it's really yummy. Um, so I need to pick four today because I'll be doing the exact same, cooking them for dinner tomorrow night. So I need four, I think there's a few more than that so I might cut all the ones that are ready and then just store them away. So when you're cutting pumpkins and squashes you want to use a nice sharp secateurs or, or knife. You want to make a nice clean cut and you also want to leave as much stalk on it as possible because the stalk is where the infection starts so if you leave as much on it as possible then it will give the, the actual crop, the squash or the pumpkin, uh, more of a chance to survive through winter storage. So I just need to find one that's nice and right there. I just love these so much. I love looking at them and just holding them because they fit in your hands really nicely. And of course they're the perfect size for one person. So I just need to find three more now. sad to say that the tomatoes have blight. As you can see the, the stems and the plants are turning a blackish brownish colour and some of the tomatoes are also turning rotten and black so they've been affected by blight which is such a shame but there's been quite, quite a large amount of trouble growing tomatoes up here and now I can see why. Because of the blight and also because they need constant attention with their watering. Now, 
I won't be growing tomatoes again. They've just been too much trouble and I've literally gotten five tomatoes from from these four plants, so it's just it's not worth it at all. What I might do though is grow tomatoes at home in the garden just because they'll be right on the doorstep then and they'll be easier to look after. Um, and then the plan is to grow some flowers in this trough because it's quite a big trough and I'll be putting some dahlias and some gladioli in the trough. Um, so that will look really nice. It will look nicer than tomatoes anyway, hopefully. Um, but the, the job for now is to try and salvage any tomatoes which haven't been affected by the blight. There's quite a few that are starting to turn red, so I'll just continue to ripen them off on the windowsill. Um, and then it's just a matter of pulling the plants up and then burning them, and I'm going to have a bonfire later tonight. <sighs> so I better get started. I'm going to pick a red cabbage today just because three out of the six that I planted are growing to quite a significant size now and this one at the front is ready his head feels really nice and firm so I'm going to pick him today and I'm going to take it home and make some red cabbage pickle so I'm going to use a pair of secateurs for this really you could use a knife however I'm going to be asking for a harvesting knife for Christmas, so I don't have one yet. So I'm going to use some secateurs, but the stalk is rather thick, which is why a knife is usually better. And there it is! The first red cabbage. I'm quite pleased with that, actually. I can't wait to taste it. I've taken the net off the carrots just because they needed a good old weed. They were getting very weedy. Um, so I've literally just weeded them now and they're looking a lot better. Now these are the ones that I'm going to pick today. These were sown back in March. And then there's another row behind it there. They were sown in April. So they're, they're getting there. They're still quite little, but it's quite good succession, really. <laughs> and then there's also two rows at the front here, which I only planted about a month ago, so they're still really small. I'm going to need to thin them out um, soon because there's quite a few there. Um, but I will cover them up until they get a little bit bigger just to stop the carrot fly from getting in there. So I'm going to pick a few of these today because I've not picked any yet. So it'll be interesting to see what they're like because I had a bit of trouble with these. Because I sowed them and then they didn't come up for ages and I thought the slugs ate them. Um, and I thought they weren't going to appear. So, so here goes. And they're ginormous. I'm really pleased with that. That's turned out perfect. It's really fat, actually. 
that's perfect. I might pull a couple more um, just for dinner tonight and then I'll leave the rest in the ground because they store quite well in the ground. But what I do is I'll put the net back around just to stop the carrot fly again. Earlier on in the week I went foraging for some common hogweed. Now there's a little country lane not that far from where I live so I cycled on my bicycle and I managed to get a load of these stems. Now I'll quickly just show you a clip of me foraging them before I get on with making the bee hotel. Now the common hogweed stems are in fact hollow, which make them perfect for creating homes for leafcutter bees. Now leafcutter bees are solitary um, and they use hollow things like these stems to create their homes and their nests. Now what they do is they fill it with mud, they lay their eggs um, and they also fill it with some pollen which they've collected and then they fill the ends with little circles of leaves which they cut and then they fly away and they die um, and then the eggs hatch um, and then they feed on the pollen which has been left there and then when they emerge they emerge as uh, grown leaf cutter bees um, so it's a nice little life circle there um, but it'll be really nice to create some homes for them now I am using some leftover pallets I got some pallets to make part of my fence um, from a local industrial estate so they were free um, and there's a few strips left over so I've managed to use just one strip like this to make a little house. Now here's the frame, here's one I made earlier um, and it's just simple, I mean I put a roof on it, you don't have to do that um, but I thought it would look quite nice. So what I've done is I've cut two pieces of wood for the side here. Now they're 20 centimetres long. Um, and then these two sides are 15 centimetres long. And then the roof, one part is 13 centimetres and this part is 11 centimetres. And I've glued it and nailed it all together so it's nice and sturdy. So all I've got to do now is I'm going to give this a little coat of paint. Now I'm using paint which is friendly for the bees and the wildlife. So that's absolutely perfect. So I'm going to give it a coat or two just to protect it from the weather element so I can keep reusing it year after year. Um, and then I'm going to put some slate on the roof just to make it look even nicer. And then I can start putting the common hogweed stems in.
that's all been painted and it's nice and dry now. I left it out in the sun for a couple of hours while I got on with some weaving, so it turned out perfect really. So now all that's left to do is to cut the slate, which is going to go on the top of the roof. Now, you don't necessarily need slate and you don't really need a roof either, but I think it's going to look quite nice with a little slate roof. And we got this slate from a local reclamation yard and it was 50p for um, quite a big slab of it. So it's worth it really. Now to cut the slate, all I use is a chisel and a hammer. Now sometimes this doesn't work and sometimes it does. So I've cut one bit already. So that one will be about there. And what you do is you just bang down on the chisel um, and create a line across the slate. And then it should cut in a straight line like that. I'm just going to neaten off the edges. What you can do is you can use the hammer and just bang down along the edge just to get rid of all the sharp bits. And it just softens the edges slightly. You can do the same with the corners as well just so they're not sharp. And that's that, two roof tiles. Now I've cut them so there's going to be a little bit of an overhang on the front, quite similar to my shed. I'm just so if it rains, then the rain won't really get the common hogweed stems wet. Now all I need to do is nail the slate onto the wooden frame. Now I might put a bit of glue down just to make it a bit more secure. And I'll actually bang the nails into the slate before I put it on the roof just to make life a little bit easier. Now I'll put one nail near the top and one nail near the bottom. So it's just a matter of banging the nail in to the slate. So starting to go through now, so I will just put the other nail in. So about there, so it won't be right near the bottom of the slate. Because the slate overhangs the side there, you need to make sure that when you bang the nail in, it's actually going to go into the wood. that's that. I've just created a 
the hotel for leaf cutter bees for about 50p which is just great now all that i need to do is to hang it on the side of the shed i'm just going to put a nail quite a long nail inside of the shed and then just hang it on in the little bit there and then i will put the common hogweed stems inside and then that will be done now i don't expect any leaf cutter bees to move in this year i've left it a little bit late but hopefully it will be all ready for them next year So I'm just picking a few raspberries to take home for lunch. I'm going to have them with some Greek yogurt, so that'll be really nice. Now this variety is called Autumn Bliss, so obviously they produce their fruit in autumn. This is actually their first year. I bought them last autumn. So they're not really producing much berries, but there's enough to have with some yogurts, which is great. So I'm just going to pick these ones here and I'm going to head home for some lunch. So thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.